1992 would soon to be over, and after a year of revolutions in the computer industry, Microsoft has announced that a new computer game, Minesweeper, will be included in all new Windows devices. What are your thoughts, John? Well, Jeff, this change reminds me of the addition of the standard S calculator to all devices back in 1985. Ah, uh, yes, another good example of an added program to the entire user base. Oh, not because of the entire user base, but because of the calculator part. Oh, what? The title isn't clickbait. I saw that other YouTubers were making calculators and simple computers out of video games such as Minecraft, Terraria, and even a marble simulator, so I thought, I also want to be qualified as either mentally insane or just having way too much free time and make my own video game calculator. So I decided to make it out of Minesweeper, which means that at least up until now, this will be the calculator made of the most simple game ever. But what would this even look like? Unlike other video games, Minesweeper doesn't seem to have anything we could use as inputs, circuitry, or even outputs. As a matter of fact, once the game starts, all the mines are already in specific locations and there's no way of changing that. Which seems like it would mean that there's no way of the calculator giving different outputs depending on different inputs. Luckily, I figured out a way around it. Even though we can't change the map, we can change how the player moves along it. Basically, we're going to build a labyrinth where, depending on your starting positions, which are going to be your inputs, the only soluble path will lead the player to a specific location that will correspond to a type of answer that the calculator can give us. Using this concept, it's pretty easy to figure out a design for a working cable. However, before we can keep working on our Minesweeper calculator, we have to understand how a normal calculator works. Basic devices like these don't use programming. Instead, they use hardware. Specifically, there are these things called gates, where depending on the inputs, an output will come out. The most common is an AND gate. When both its inputs are turned on, then it turns on its output. OR gates will turn on with either, and then there's more complicated ones like XOR gates, which turn on with one, but not if both are on. Knowing this, it's pretty easy to just look up a simple addition calculator on Google and try to recreate that in Minesweeper. The easiest component to start with is the OR gate, which just looks something like this. And by the way, the names don't really matter, these are just standard names. We could call this Bob if we wanted to. Oh wait, I got the backwards. We could call this Bob if we wanted to. Next, we can make the NOT gate. The NOT gate inverts the input. So, if the input is on, the output is off, if the input is off, the output is on. Pretty simple. But it gets very complicated in Minesweeper. The problem is, is as we said, we are leading the player through a path. But, if the input is off, the player isn't in that area to begin with. This means that we have to spontaneously reveal a location for the player, which is impossible. This happens because the cable is supposed to have two states, on and off. But in our case, our cable is either on, or just doesn't exist. Luckily, there's a way around this. If we need two different states, we can just have two different cables. If this cable is on, we consider this line to be 1. But if this cable is on, then it's 0. So all we have to do to make a NOT gate is cross the lines and basically invert the signal. You might have realized that I haven't been showing Minesweeper footage for this part, and that's because this circuit is still not possible. The problem is that we're crossing wires, something that isn't possible in a 2D game. This is because the intersection would only split the signal. So is that it? Is this impossible? Every circuit for an addition calculator online shows at least some wires crossing. Luckily, there is one way around this, literally. If you can't go through something, you can always go around it. And even though this kind of looks like a joke, it is the only option. Because of this, we can't use designs made for normal people, so I'm gonna have to make my own. While this footage of me wasting an hour designing something that nobody will ever use plays, I want to let you know about some channel updates. For starters, I know it's been a while, but I've been busy. I've had finals, and also I haven't been neglecting the channel. 
With the help of a viewer in the Discord server, I've designed this little fella who might make more appearances in future videos. Also, the channel got copyright striked, which is always fun, and even though it wasn't too serious and I was able to get it appealed, it was kind of threatening, like being held at a nerf gun point. But the nerf gun is way too realistic. And look at that, we've got a working circuit design. The way this works is by adding in binary, where all the digits can either be a 1 or a 0. Using this, the circuit adds by checking if the digits are both 1 1 or 0 0, in which case that digit is a 0, and if it's a 1 1, you carry the 1 to the next digit. I'll leave a video in the description that explains this a bit more clearly. At this point, there's only one other problem we have to solve. Remember that joke before about calling Gore Gates Bob and how I said it backwards and whatever? Yeah, it turns out that direction is very important. The way an OR gate is set up right now means that one input can turn on the other input. This cascades breaking the entire calculator, which means we have to update the OR gate so that it has a one-way system in each side. The way one-ways work is by restricting the amount of information one side has. We do this by implementing some sort of wall that could have landmines in different locations, and the only way of knowing is by having information from the side of the wall. Also, you might see I'm testing this component, but I'm not doing it by hand. The online Minesweeper map maker I'm using has an auto solver, or I guess in Minesweeper terms would just be a miner, and it's what I'm going to be using to solve the final circuit somewhat quickly. So yeah, I'm going to basically be a this miner. Wait, wait, YouTube, it's a misunderstanding, please now that we have an OR gate that actually works, we can actually use this principle of requiring more knowledge from one side than the other to make an AND gate. Basically, we have a cable with a little barrier in the middle, and the only way of knowing what this barrier is and how to avoid it is by seeing it from the side, which we only do when we approach it from a different cable. And this is it. That was all the components, all the problems, and a custom made circuit. I know this prep work can seem pretty tedious, but for projects like this, trust me, it's worth it. Because now, we can do this. And that's it. About 3 hours and 5,838 minds later, we have a working calculator. So now, let's see it in action. First, we input two numbers up to four digits long in binary in here. Then, we could play this ourselves, but for a time, I'm going to use the autoplay. And we see how all the minds are solved all the way down until we reach these. 
it's not super intuitive to use, but from the diagrams we made, we can see that when any of these are on, or in other words, mines appear, that is the equivalent of a one, with the exception of this one, which if anything appears is a zero. I could invert this, but that would require at least some player input, which kind of defeats the purpose of total automation. So yeah, that's it. Maybe a bit anticlimactic, but the beauty of this project is knowing how it works. The device you're watching this in and that I made this in already have a calculator that works better, but I'll always cherish this one more.